This podcast has been brought to you by Lenovo, smarter technology for all. Hi, and welcome to the Random Reads podcast. I'm your host, Mia Landrigan, and all we do here is book reviews. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back to Random Reviews. Today, we will be looking at the first book in the Percy Jackson series, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, by Rick Riordan, the number one New York best-selling author of over 20 books. Riordan, originally from Texas, United States, was an English and history teacher when he published Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, along with a couple adult mysteries. He stepped away from teaching to pursue writing the Percy Jackson series as its popularity grew worldwide. This series comprises of 15 core books, has three spin-offs and links to other Riordan series. Based off the Greek myths of heroes, gods and merciless kings, Percy Jackson is a modern kid in a modern world living an ancient style of life. Percy Jackson is a 12-year-old boy and is someone you might call a troubled kid. Diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia, he is a trouble magnet and has been kicked out of more than six schools over six years. Percy was living his life at his latest boarding school in upstate New York, when his whole world was flipped upside down. Shortly after discovering the Greek gods were still alive, and his father Poseidon was one of them, Percy, along with Grover, Deceta, and Annabeth, daughter of Athena, are sent off on a perilous quest to return the most powerful weapon in the existence to the king of the gods, Zeus. The Percy Jackson books are an, a brilliant and educational fantasy series written for young teens around 12 to 14, but can be enjoyed by all. They explore a variety of themes, including self-acceptance of Percy's diagnosis and developing maturity over the course of the book. Percy has always hated school and has struggled throughout his entire experience there with his average grade sitting at a D+, making him think he would never equate to anything. After discovering his bloodline, he began to understand himself more, and his diagnosis became his superpowers. Percy's ADHD gave him natural battle reflexes, making him more alert and focused on the battlefield, and his dyslexia was due to his brain being hardwired to read ancient Greek, making him so much more confident in himself as he finally found something that felt right to him and was good at. Over his quest, Percy and his friends were left with only their limited training skills and whatever they had packed to survive to find their way across the USA and the underworld to complete their mission. By being thrown into their quest head first, Percy, Annabeth and Grover learned to depend only on themselves to get through, making them more independent and mature. A challenging idea from the book was that it was completely acceptable in the gods' eyes to use an undertrained, uneducated, and very young child to essentially complete their chores, like settling major disputes, putting the demigods' lives on the line without a second thought. For a normal kid, it would be the equivalent to dropping them off on a random road with a pocket knife, some food and water, a blanket and a torch with some spare batteries, and expecting them to be able to make a 100k journey back home within a week safe. This book was fun to read as it shed a new, light-hearted perspective on the Greek heroes. I have personally read many myths including Troy, Heroes and Mythos by Stephen Fry and countless other books on Greek mythology where you follow the heroes like Heracles, Jason or Percy's namesake Perseus but you don't get to understand what it's like because they're all written in third person. The Percy Jackson series gives a unique insight on the thought process of a Greek hero, and the fact that it's set in modern-day USA makes this series extremely relatable, but different. When I was first introduced to this series by a friend in Year 5, I didn't understand all the names and how to pronounce them, how everything linked together, but Riordan introduces everything at a slow and understandable pace, in such a way that you don't realise you're learning at the same time. There are so many references to Greek and other mythologies Riordan touches on later in the series that link to everyday life. 
For example, the planets of our solar system, except Earth, and many other celestial bodies are named after Roman deities, such as Jupiter. The largest planet is the king of the gods, and the Roman equivalent to Zeus. In the future, I would love to read the Iliad, the stories of Troy from Homer's perspective. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Random Reads podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode's review of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Royden. I'm your host, Mia Landrigan. Catch you next time on Random Reads.